All right, moving on. We are going to move on to number eight. Number eight is to write each in vertex form. So we're going to have to manipulate these equations into vertex form. So before, when we were completing the square, the y was actually equal to zero because we were trying to solve for x. Now what's going to happen here is that we are going to just work on one side of the equal sign because the y is going to stay a y. We're not trying to solve for x. We're just trying to get this into standard form or in quadrat and to vertex form, I'm sorry. Vertex form, I'm just going to write it here so we can compare and see what we're trying, you know, what our goal is. y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Okay, so the first thing you want to do to get this into vertex form, right now this is standard form, right? We are going to group the x squared and the x together. We're going to leave the constant value out. We're going to shun the constant value. So it's just the quadratic and the linear term. Okay, so um, I, for those two terms, what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the square. So I'm going to put those in parentheses, group them together, and put that negative 5 outside the parentheses. And I left some space here so I can write down my number that's going to complete the square. Okay, so we're doing the same thing that we've done a couple days now. Take the linear coefficient, that's 8, divide by 2, and square that. So I need to add 16 inside my parentheses to complete the square. Now I'm only working on one side of the equal sign here. I'm working on the right side and I still need to keep it balanced. So I can't just like add stuff and not worry about it. I've got to balance the equation. So if I'm adding 16 inside the parentheses, outside the parentheses, I need to do something that's going to balance it out and make it actually a zero like I'm not adding anything. So the only way I can do that when I'm working on one side of the equal sign, if I add something inside the parentheses to balance it, I have to subtract it outside the parentheses. So whatever I'm adding inside... Sorry about that. Whatever I'm adding inside the parentheses, I have to subtract outside the parentheses. Okay, so now I have this perfect square trinomial on in the parentheses and I can factor that into a binomial squared. So that's going to help me get this part of the um, quadratic, the x minus h part. Okay, so I factor it just like we've been factoring perfect square trinomials. Take the square root of the first term, take the square root of the constant, put a little squared exponent out there, and the sign that goes in between is what the linear term, the sign of the linear term. And then outside, I'm going to combine my negative 5 and negative 16, and that is negative 21. And so now I have it in a vertex form. So my vertex, my hk, is negative 4, negative 21. That's where the vertex has shifted to. My A value is positive, so I know it's going to open up. Okay, I don't have anything other than a 1 that's multiplying the parentheses, so it's not going to have a vertical stretch or a horizontal stretch. And that's it. You're done with that problem. Okay, so let's look at number 9. Number 9 is a little bit different because it has a coefficient other than 1 for its squared term. So that one's going to be a little bit different. Oops. Oh, I'll go ahead and... Well, now let me rewrite that. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have put that parentheses there. Alright, so again, I'm going to group the squared term and the linear term. That constant value always gets left out in the cold. So what I want to do is I want to get that leading coefficient to be a 1. That's the way I need it to be to work the problem. So between these two terms, the quadratic and the linear term, I need to factor out that negative 3. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to have a negative 3 and then parentheses x squared. I don't want to take an x out, okay, just the coefficient. 
And what's going to happen with this linear term is, since I'm taking a negative out, the sign's going to change for one thing. And then 3 divided into 6 is 2. And the x is going to stay, because I'm not doing anything with the x's. And I want to leave some space to complete the square. And then I write my constant outside the parentheses. OK, so now I'm ready to complete the square with my quadratic and my linear. And I'm going to use this linear term that's inside the parentheses. Uh, negative 2. You don't have to worry about the sign, remember, because you're going to square it. So I'm going to take the coefficient 2. Uh, you can multiply by half or divide by 2. It's the same thing. That's going to give me 1. And square that is 1. So I'm going to add 1 inside the parentheses. I need to do the same thing outside, or actually subtract the same number outside the parentheses to get balanced. But before you write down a 1, it's not really a 1, because I have this negative 3 that is going to be multiplied by it. So I need to actually take 1 times negative 3, and I'm going to subtract a negative 3 outside the parentheses to keep it balanced. OK, so negative, negative, that's going to make that plus. Now I'm ready to factor the trinomial. y equals negative 3 times x minus 1 squared. And I'm going to have plus 2 outside the parentheses. So this negative 3 is going to make the graph open down, for one thing. The 3 is going to give it a vertical stretch. And the vertex, the new vertex, is going to be 1, 2. That's your hk. And if I wanted to write the axis of symmetry, it would be x equals 1. Whatever your h is is your axis of symmetry. OK, so I'm going to stop here for now. We're going to come back and do a couple more little examples. And you guys will be done with the notes for tonight.